workers that can uh, work with you on different uh, ailments and what you may have. And uh, so it is really a great organization and backed by Memorial, who's got a, a pretty good reputation in town for taking care of its community. And um, and now that we're the only hospital in town, we're usually a little more busier when it comes to emergent, emergent needs, but, um, uh, but it's still a great, great place to be. Uh, bereavement, uh, like I do, quickly about some of the things that we do, and one of the most popular things is finally coming back is our cooking for one class. So if you are interested in that, it doesn't mean, um, even if you're married, if you're wanting to learn how to pare things down, um, we have a cooking for one class and we do uh, offer that once a month and starting in uh, April, we will uh, be back at uh, teaching and having that class. Our executive chef from the Cottage of the Meadow is gonna be teaching that. So um, Christy can give you my information about that if you're interested in Signing up, uh, we definitely can get that for you. So, all right, so let's talk about five wishes. And the five wishes that is explained in the wonderful document that, that I, I scanned it in, so you'll see it on here, but the great document that we have here, the five wishes that it goes over is the person I want to make care decisions for me when I can't, the kind of medical treatment I want or don't want, how comfortable I want to be, how I want people to treat me, and what I, uh, what I want my loved ones to know. The first two wishes, okay, all five are very important, but the first two wishes are very important when it comes to your healthcare decisions. The last three deal with a lot of um, comfort measures at the end of life and what you want, such as hold, you know, I want somebody to hold my hand or play soft music or things like that. Um, but those are your wishes and those are important. And so we'll kind of go over each of those uh, as we go along. So five wishes, um, this memorial set out a while back to say, this is such an important thing we are going to pay for uh, getting these booklets from the organization that came up with this. So the Memorial Foundation has spent a lot of money uh, ordering these booklets uh, to, to give out to the community. We believe it is that important for your, our community to understand and be able to let known what uh, their wishes are. When I was a chaplain uh, at Memorial, I can't tell you how many times I saw um, people in the emergency room or in intensive care uh, at the end of life. And the family is fighting left and right about what to do for the care of their loved one. And I'm sure the person in the bed probably wasn't expecting to be there. Uh, it was something that happened, uh, but the decisions this person did not make the decisions that they needed to make uh, to be prepared for if these things happen. Now, five wishes really is set up if you are at the end of life, towards the end of life, and what kind of care you want to have. Now, if I go and I break my leg, this really isn't something that um, uh, needs to be really, uh, is, is used for. Um, my wife hopefully will hopefully will take care of me and help me when I need help. Um, granted, uh, I can't make her mad at me because she really won't help me. But this, say I walk out of work uh, or in dry, start driving home and a car hits me, sideswipes me and I'm put into the hospital. And um, I've got um, intubated, I've got tubes running all out of me, uh, from me and, um, the I'm brain, I could possibly be brain dead or whatnot, and the doctor tells my wife whatever my diagnosis is, but my wife is just wanting to hold on for a lot longer. Well, my my five wishes is filled out and done, and it says, hey, I don't want to be on a, a a machine to keep me alive just for your benefit. Um, 
for weeks upon weeks upon weeks upon months. I want I don't want that. This right here will uh, is a document that will help you uh, help them to make the decision. The doctor can say this document says this is what your husband's wishes are. Now I will say in the beginning, and I may repeat this um, that people always trump paper. So as my wife, who would be my healthcare power of attorney, if her decision is different than what is on a piece of paper, that will always trump the paper no matter what. So it's always vitally important that whoever you choose to make the healthcare decisions for you, they know your wishes. So that they, when they get to that point, that they're not having to struggle with, do I do this or do I not do this? If my wish is I don't wish to be on a uh, life support machine, then I have told that to my power of attorney or my wife or whoever it may be, um, then they are to follow what I said. And I have it clearly written in a five wishes or whatever document you choose to help, um, excuse me, to help uh, make that decision. So this is the first inside the first page of the five wishes. And um, I just kind of wanted to read a little bit. I'm not going to read every single thing in this because it'll we'll be here for a couple hours. The five wishes is very basic and it's um, and it is uh, very uh, easy to understand for the most part. So uh, what is five wishes? I just want to read this. Five wishes is the first living will that talks about your personal, emotional, and spiritual needs, as well as your medical wishes. It lets you choose the person that you want to make healthcare decisions for you if you are not able to make them for yourself. Five Wishes lets you say exactly how you wish to be treated if you get seriously ill. It was written uh, with the help of the American Bar Association's Commission on Law and Aging and the nation's leading experts in end of life care. It also is easy to use. All you have to do is check the box, circle the directions, or write a few sentences. So it's it's a document that is also, um, and as we'll see on another page, is approved by 44 states, I believe, off the top of my head. 44 states have said, including Washington State, have said this is a document that is like a um, power of attorney or a will, a living will, or whatever it may be for your medical decisions, you can use this. So, um, um, so if you, as you scroll down and you can look at how five wishes can help you and your family, it basically gives your family peace of mind. If in the state of Washington, and I, I was going to print this out and I can't uh, remember, uh, remember off the top of my head, there is a list of about 10 or 12 uh, people who make the decisions for you if you're unable to make your decision. So if you do not have a document like this, it's a power of attorney, um, a spouse, then a parent, then uh, siblings and children. I just can't, it just goes down. So if my wife and I, if my wife had passed away and I was in the hospital, both my kids, if they were over the age of 18, would have to agree on any decision that is made for my medical decision. If my dad was in the hospital and there was a medical issue, my brother, my sister, and I would all have to agree on whatever the decision is. So if one of us was flew in from out of state, went in and tried to make a different decision, the hospital would have to um, approve that. So having a five wishes document or a document that has everything specifically written out helps your family say, hey, this is what dad would want. This is what mom would want in case of an emergency. So that's the basic, basic of what this document is about. So these are the states, the 42 states uh, that um, you can, um, uh, that approve this have gone through their uh, state uh, Congress and has approved it. So anybody over the age of 18, uh, who married, single, parents, adults, children, everybody can use this as long as you are above the age of 18. Now, how do I, I was going to read the bottom part, how do I change to five wishes? 
It says, you may already have a living will or a durable power of attorney for health care. If you want to use five wishes instead, all you need to do is fill out and sign a new five wishes as directed. As soon as you sign it, it takes away any advanced directive that you had before. To make sure uh, the right form is used, please do the following. Destroy all copies of your old living will or durable power of attorney for health care. Or you can write revoke in large letters over across the copy and tell your lawyer uh, if she, he or she helped you prepare old forms. And tell your health care agent, family members, and doctors that you have filled out new five wishes. And make sure they know about your new wishes. So how it works is whatever the newest or the... Um, whatever the newest document, the, the most recent date signed and dated by you is the most recent and most um, relevant in the time of need. Hope that makes sense. So any old ones, if you were to use this, all the old ones do not count anymore. All right, so let's talk about the wishes. So wish number one, the person I want to make healthcare decisions for me when I can't make them for myself. Um, so if you're no longer able to make your own healthcare decisions, now, as long as you can make your own decisions, as long as you're, if you're at the, say it's, you're in the hospital at Memorial and you're sitting up and say, Hey, I want this done and this done and that done. You make your own decisions. This is only used for if you cannot make your decisions for yourself. So if I am unconscious, um, in the ICU, the intensive care unit, um, and cannot make my own personal decisions for myself, for my health, someone else has to do it. And um, so you wanna make sure the person that you choose is someone who will follow your wishes. So um, I know people who do not want their spouse to make their decision. As much as they love them, they have their one of their children or, um, a good friend or of the family who will make that decision because they know their spouse well enough that in a crisis situation would not be very good at trying to make a good decision. So whoever you choose to make your decision, this is vitally important. So, um, and whoever you choose, another rule is, um, you need, beside your spouse, of course, uh, or children, um, they should not have a financial stake in your health care. So say you chose your best friend, but you're planning on leaving your best friend you know, $50,000. Well, if your best friend needs some money, he may, he or she may say, you know what, let's just pull the plug so we can just get this thing rolling. You want to make sure that if no one is financially at stake, for the person that is making your decisions for you. So you can put your spouse as, so like I would put my spouse on here as my first choice. Um, so it's vitally important, it's darn room. It's vitally important that you choose somebody that you know and trust who will listen to you. Now just hope and pray your spouse isn't mad at you at the time when you're putting this down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so you wanna, choose the person that you think is the most important to you. And then the second part is if this person is not able or willing to make choices for me or is divorced or legally separated from me or this person has died, then these people can make the next, the choices. So say I put my spouse down and both of her, both her and I are in a major car wreck and she dies on impact. I'm in the, at the hospital, she can't make those decisions for me. I want my children, if they're above the age of 18, I want uh, a sister-in-law, brother-in-law, brother, sister, somebody that I can trust to make that decision for me. I want them to be listed as the second or third choice. Um, again, people that you know and trust is, is so important that um, you put down there. So it, I kind of went over that. It's just picking the right person of your healthcare agent. Um, and I'll just talk about the bullet points. Well, first, they need to be at least 18 years or older. And I guess in Colorado, 21 years or older. And should not be, uh, these people should not be your healthcare provider, so your doctor, including the owner and operator of health 
health or residential or community care facility serving you, an employee or spouse of an employee uh, of your health care provider or serving as an agent of proxy for 10 or more people unless he or she sits, she is in your spouse or a close relative. So anybody that's taking care of you, you should not make as your um, health, your person to be chosen. So these are just really great suggestions and highly, highly, highly recommended to you to do that. So as we go continue on, and so it's important that you choose that person, but um, this right here, um, if he says, I understand that my healthcare agent can make healthcare decisions for me. I want my healthcare agent to be able to do the following. Now, there's a number of things here you can read through. Uh, and we'll just I'll just read the first bullet point. Make choices for me about my medical care or services like tests, medicine, or surgery. This care or service should be uh, uh, could be to find out uh, what my health health problem is or how to treat it. It can also include care to keep me alive. If this treatment or care has already started, my healthcare agent can keep it going or have it stopped. So go through, you circle which ones that you think are the most important to you. Maybe all of them are important to you. You can circle every single one. Um, whatever you feel uh, you want your healthcare agent. Remember, this is a legally binding document uh, that you want your healthcare person to take care of you. And then at the bottom is this listed below are any changes, additions, or limitations on my healthcare agent's persons. They go, so if you say, I don't want them to be able to make decisions about when I go to the bathroom. I don't know. I'm trying to think off the top of my head here. Whatever you feel is most important to you or not important to you, you can uh, add to it. You can add things to it. I want my healthcare agent to do this or that. Um, in my time of need. So this is a document by you. Um, and then at the bottom is if I change my mind about having a healthcare agent, I will destroy all copies, um, including the five wishes form, tell someone such as my doctor or family that I want to cancel or change my healthcare agent or write the word revoke on, on the um, document. So these are important. If you change your person, or if you want to change anything in this, uh, it's best to just get another one. Memorial provides these for you free. So um, please take them and use them however you feel fit. Uh, this is your health care. This is your life. And you want it to be trusted with the people that you feel will do what you think. Wish number two. Let me drink a water real quick. Um, my wish for the kind of treatment I want or don't want. So this is important because you want you want to be treated as well at the end of life as you best can. What things do you want? What things do you not want? Um, now, I'm 41 years old. I can handle certain things. I have two young kids. I'm uh, nine years, uh, nine and six. And I'm going to do everything I can to stay alive. If I get hurt and I get hit, say I get hit by a bus. And, but the hospital has to put me in a um, induced coma so my body can heal. I plan on coming out of this thing. The doctors think I'm going to come out of this just fine. Um, these wishes, the five wishes, are for the end of life. If the doctor says, Nick will not make it. Nick's not going to make this. He's brain dead. Um, these are the things that I want. Okay. But if I was just to get hurt and they had put me in a coma or for whatever reason, that I can't make my decisions for me, but I'm going to be okay. Um, my spouse will uh, make those decisions for me. This is remember is at the end of life. Um, the first bullet point, I do not want to be in pain. I want my doctor to give me enough medicine to relieve my pain, even if it means that I will be drowsy or sleep more than I would otherwise. 
So if you just want morphine drip and they just keep pumping it in you, it means you may sleep, but you don't want to be in pain. There you go. If you're okay with that and you won't, may not even wake up uh, ever again and you're okay with that, that's okay. There's people that are, um, that they're, if God was to take them out or if they were to die and uh, that they uh, would be okay with that today. There are people like me. I want to live longer, much more longer. I want to see my kids grow up. I'm not right at that point yet. Uh, the second point, I do not want anything done or omitted by my doctors or nurses with the intention of taking my life. And uh, the last one, I want to be offered food and fluids by mouth and uh, keep me clean and warm. So that last point is I don't want to be too fed. I want to be able to eat. Uh, if I can't do that, don't do it to me. Life support treatment means to me, life support treatment means any medical procedure device or medication to keep me alive. So life support includes medical devices uh, to put me on, to allow me to breathe, food and water supplied by medical devices, tube feeding, uh, CPR done, uh, major surgery, blood infusion, dialysis, antibiotics, or anything else to keep me alive. If I wish if I wish to limit the meaning of life support treatment because of my religious or personal beliefs, write these down. So there are some faith traditions who don't believe in blood transfusion. So you could write that down. Uh, there are some people that don't, who do not want anything done to them whatsoever. Now, if you are at that part of your life that you wish no, um, what's called a do not resuscitate part, you should talk to your doctor and there's this little, in the state of Washington, every state has a different color. In the state of Washington, it's this uh, green, lime green, neon green, good for St. Patrick's Day uh, color form. And it's a physician's orders for life-sustaining treatment. Um, so you, the doctor would put on your form that uh, it's called a do not resuscitate. And say you were to have a heart attack and go down in your house, and someone calls 911 and the paramedics were to come, they may ask, do they have a DNR? And if you say, yes, they do, they will ask for the form. Generally, it's always on the fridge. If a um, paramedics were to come and they have to give you life sustaining treatment, no matter what, unless they see this form signed by a doctor. If they don't see this form, even though I tell them my wife does not want to be resuscitated, unless they have this form, they will do CPR. They will do everything they can to bring her back. So that's vitally important for those people who wish for uh, do not resuscitate. You need to talk to your doctor. Your doctor will have to fill this out for you, and you will have that. Um, five wishes. Uh, this is if you're in the hospital. This um, so whatever you wish in the midst of um, your crisis in the hospital or doctor's office. Uh, in case of an emergency, if you have a medical emergency, an ambulance person ar may arrive. They may look uh, to see if you have a DNR form or bracelet. Some states have it. I haven't seen one here, but um, it has to be filled out and signed by a doctor. This right here will not take care of that for you. Okay, so the next three wishes talk about uh, your personal, spiritual, and emotional wishes, and they're important, how they're important to you. Um, so like wish three, this is my wish of how comfortable I wish to be. Uh, you cross out anything you don't agree with. So let me find a short one. Um, I wish to be massaged with warm oils as often as I can be. If that's a big deal to you, circle it, leave it, however you want to do it. If it's not that big of a deal to you or you don't like people touching you, mark it off. Um, I want my favorite music played when possible until the time of my death. Uh, probably Christmas music for me. I love Christmas music. You know, it's, I play it from November 1st through after Christmas. My wife, I drive her crazy. I think I drove Christy crazy when we uh, worked together in the office. Because um, I was like, Christmas music! Um, so whatever it may be, um, 
talks about you know, doing your hair and nails and uh, how you want to be comfortable. Uh, it's important. If this is important to you, let it be important to you. Let people know your wishes. Wish for my wish for how I want people to treat me. Um, let's see. I wish to be cared uh, for with kindness and cheerfulness and not sadness. Uh, I don't want people crying over me. I want people to come and say happy stories. I want people to come and joke with me and and laugh and say good things. Um, Lindsay Johnson or ZPP Lindsay Johnson. That's not me. Um, I wish uh, to have members of my faith community oh. told that I am sick and ask uh, to pray for me and visit me. Uh, I wish to have uh, others by my side praying for me when possible. I want to die at home if it can be done. Um, these are just things that how you wish for people to treat you. And um, so look it over. And if there's other things, you have a place to be able to write these things at the end. Um, wish number five, my wish for what I want my loved ones to know. So um, I, I wish for, uh, to have my family and friends know that I love them. Um, I wish to be forgiven for the times I've hurt my family, friends, and others. So anything that you may want to tell people. Uh, sometimes it's really hard, but um, and it's it's a nice thing to to be able to express. Um, now, wishes three, four, and five are more comfort wishes for you personally. How do you wish for people to um, what you want loved ones to know about you, or what um, how are things going? Now, I want to address one real quick. It says, after my death, I would like my body to be, and it's a circle one, buried or cremated. Now, this document does not, sorry, this document does not, how do I put it? This is not a document where it says, okay, to your loved ones, now this is your wish. But with the funeral home, unless you have already started some sort of plan with them, this document does not supersede um, anything. Now, you can say, hey, I want to be cremated, and that's all well and done. But if my family who says, no, we're going to bury him. If I have not a plan set up with the funeral home that's already prepaid or started paying on or something worked out with them, uh, this does not supersede what your kids kids or family wish to do. So um, that's important for you to know on that part. So if you wish a certain way to be treated after death on that part, um, work out something with one of the local funeral homes and they will have it in your wishes at that point and start paying on it. I think even if you give them $5, it's already in the, in the works. So, um, and then at the end, you're able to, to write some things down. If anyone asks how I want to be remembered, please say the following about me. Um, if there is to be a memorial service for me, I wish for this service to include the following. Um, and so these are just wishes that you can write down to, um, to do. Things for you over with my so signing the, the five wishes form. So it's not all said and done until this is officially done at the end. So you have to fill this part out and it's important that you have two witnesses. Um, so on the, so you sign the first part and then your address and phone and date. Now I'm gonna read the witness part so you know who to ask. I, the witness, declare that the person signed or acknowledged this form or hereafter as personally known to me that he or she signs or acknowledge the healthcare agent living will person. Um, and it's not under duress that you're, they're not being forced by a gun to, to uh, sign this or make them the healthcare person. Um, I also decree that I'm over the age of 18. Um, and so basically it goes over, it says the individual pointed, um, Agent, an agent proxy, surrogate, patient advocate, representative by this document of his or her successor, the person's healthcare provider, including owner or operator of a healthcare long-term or other residential or community care facility serving as a person or an employee of that person's healthcare home care provider. We talked about that earlier. Um, so you wanna make sure that these two witnesses are people that aren't gonna be beneficially um, taken care of, uh, the two witnesses, uh, 
So you want a, a good friend or uh, maybe even another family member, uh, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin who will sign this because they're not the ones that are going to be, they have no financial stake in all this. Now, in the state of Washington, all you need are the two signatures of witnesses and their address. And a few states, you do have to have a notary. If you choose to have a notary, I always say it's an extra stamp of approval. But in the state of Washington, you do not need that. So um, just two good witnesses that you choose to that that um, see that you are of sound mind, that no one is forcing you to sign this, that you're doing it on your own free will. Um, I think that's all I have. No, let's see. So what you do afterwards, that's right. So what do you do afterwards? Um, make sure that everything is signed. You tell those people that are your healthcare power of attorneys, this is why decisions. Um, keep the original copy, but make copies for them so that they have a copy of their own. You can also give it a copy to the doc, your own personal doctor. They can scan it into your file or their chart. Um, and in the time of need, they should be able to pull it at the hospital. Um, and this is for residents of Washington State may choose to have this document notarized in place of having two witnesses. I forgot about that. So I'm glad these things are on here. So, um, so if you don't wish to find two witnesses, you can do it in front of the notary public instead. Um, and so that leads me to any questions. I feel like I talked really fast. Sorry if I did. So I'm here to answer any questions. <laughs> I have one. Is cremation available in Yakima now? Yes, you just talk to the local funeral home that you choose. Um, there are many great funeral homes uh, in Yakima, so you just talk to them and they will cremate you. Um, most of them will do it here in Yakima. Okay, there are more questions probably for people who live alone. Now the green form, I've to been mm -hmm. told that goes on the refrigerator. <laughs> yes. And uh, everything else, can everything else go on the refrigerator or sure. what do you do about that? Sure, you can, um, you can uh, put whatever you want on the refrigerator. Yeah, it's, it's just, I think it's vitally important after it's signed, if you use the five wishes to get a copy to your healthcare power of attorney or whoever's gonna make those decisions so that they have your wishes but also give a copy to your doctor and they'll have it uh, okay. put into your file that and they'll I scan it in. But everything you mentioned, I went through with my attorney. Uh -huh. so all in the papers that are near the refrigerator. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, this is- I guess uh, that's all you can do. <laughs> exactly. So if you have a, a, uh, a will or document or ex explaining what you want or don't want, um, you don't have to use this. This is just another form or tool. Most people don't know what to do. And this is a great way of uh, helping you, guide you through the important parts if you were at that part in your life. And for your family, give your family some peace of mind. Okay. Well, I have you, I'll let you go after this. But if you opt for cremation, do you have to make arrangement for the disposal of the remains? And what are the rules and the laws about that? That is a great question. I, pro I probably not the best one to answer that one. If you do talk to your uh, funeral home that you do, uh, that you're, uh, you'll be going through, they would be able to help you or, the, or with your family member to talk with them about that. So if you have specific wishes, um, if you have any family that are, will be taking of your um, ashes, so say you want to go to the mountain, the mountaintops and, um, and have them spread, you may want to ask, maybe the funeral will probably be the best one to ask on that one, because I don't have all those answers uh, yeah. when it comes to that part. Okay. I know on the cruise ship, because I love cruising, uh, they don't allow you to do it unless you get special permission. So um, oh, is that right? that's, that's where I want mine thrown. Take me on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, you have your hand raised. Larry, go ahead, Larry, unmute yourself. Yeah, I wonder um, do you uh, recognize uh, Washington legislation uh, that allows people to designate that their uh, remains be composted? And uh, have you thought about how that option? 
uh, would work with this document. So you were breaking up in the beginning, so I didn't get all of that. I think, uh, but I got to understand about like after you pass away, you can put all your information about what you wish, what you wish for after your passing in this. Now, the best way to ever make sure that it's happening, my understanding is the best is to work with the funeral home uh, and have a, a payment plan or a start paying for or pay, have it paid off. And that will, Nick, yes, yes, sir. Uh, 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 I'll take another shot at getting the okay. first part of the question across. Okay. Are, are you familiar with the new law that provides people may choose and be composted? I have heard about that. I'm not 100% familiar with it. Um, okay, that's what, all, that's okay. the beginning of my question. Okay, and, sorry. And then I, it, the, uh, set the um, I'm wondering how it relates to this document. Now, you said that other people can uh, make arrangements with a funeral home to bury your body if you, mm -hmm. even though you might've said you wanted to be cremated. So I'm guessing that um, the uh, people who do the composting, if I chose that. Whoops, we lost you, Larry. Um, I, I think uh, the best way I'm gonna answer this, I think if that is your decision or your, your wish, die. It, it, but, I think um, it, it, that, that isn't, that this document is, Nick, could can yes. you can you write in other options the way you can? I, I yes, at the end that gives you a, a place where you can write in the decisions that you choose. Again, um, people always can trump any documentation. Uh, what will save that is if you have one you want to choose somebody who will honor your wishes. So if you can right. guarantee you get somebody who will honor your wishes, um, that's the vital thing. But if you have a something already paid for, that will also pretty much guarantee generally what your choice is. Okay. Yeah, I do. Other option too, you can donate your body to the medical school. Mm -hmm. So those things could be written in, I would think. And as long as your healthcare agent agrees with them, and you you have researched with that person how that happens, like composting or medical research. I would think you could add it in and witness it, yeah. Another question, um, it, it, this may not agree with your values and, and, and faith, but are you familiar with the um, Death with dig Dignity um, issues? I, I I, I know it. I, I'm not an agent of Death with Dignity, but we've had people who were been with Death with Dignity um, on hospice services. Um, I, I'm probably not the best equipped to to go into Death with Dignity. Um, if that is something that uh, you're interested in, interested in, I know there are some. Oh, go ahead, please, Mary Lou. Yeah, uh, Larry, we're gonna we're gonna offer people a chance to. Um, do a session as well with about the death of, with dignity um, choices and what you need to know about them and how they work. So that's coming up. So Nick wasn't really going to address that today, but okay. that is something that we can address. We, we I, I want to know that. more about it. Yeah, we've been in touch with them, and and uh, they they have they've been gone, and they're getting back to me by tomorrow. So you'll notice that on the schedule. We'll let you know when that's yeah. happening. Thanks. End of life, Washington. Is that yeah. right? End, end of life, Washington. Washington. Okay. Yeah. I, I've gone to one of their presentations. They are mm -hmm. got a lot of great information for you uh, and the choices that you can make. Yeah, and we 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 want to give people choices. Uh, a lot of people like Five Wishes because it's very straightforward. The other thing that Nick that I like about it is that it it asks you to talk to your family about how you feel about things and it's easy to avoid doing that. Yeah. So I think I think one of the wh whether you use this form or not, it has a lot of good ideas about conversations you might need to have with your family and and it gets you thinking about who is a good agent. I mean, I am among enough, some others that I see on the screen am single. 
and I don't have any relatives in Yakima. So I need to think through mm -hmm. who's a good agent for me. And, you know, I think one of the goals and what I really like about Five Wishes is it gets you thinking about the important things you need to make decisions about ahead of time. And whether you use this form or not, it has enormously good questions on it. And that you need to talk to your doctor as well, as Nick said. Nick, can you answer one question? When you said that if, did you, did you, when you said that if siblings disagree with each other, they have to agree, is that if you don't have an agent or is that even if you do have an agent? That's if you do, yeah. In, in the state of Washington, and I'm sorry, I did not, I was gonna print it out this morning and I completely yeah, slipped there's my an mind. Order uh, there, is a, yeah. there is an order. And if the top two or three or four are nowhere to be found or do you do not have a, it, um, say my children, say I'm older and my kids are above the age of 18 and something happens to me and my wife is not available, my two kids have to agree on my health care decisions. Then that's the if you don't have an agent. So, that's if you don't right. have an agent. Okay, right. so that's why it's important yeah. to have an So agent. they go down, exactly, yeah. because they will go down and if you're, and if it's at your children, you have to make the decision. If one says, no, I want dad to, to be on life support for as long as we want. And the other one says, no, well, dad needs to go uh, because he's not going to have a quality of life. They can't do anything. The healthcare the, that will continue to keep me on life support. So, for as long. so there's a, so there's a, um, a choice to have as many health care agents as possible there's up to three choices is that right. right right so choice one so if i put my wife and my wife just cannot make that decision it will go to choice two or choice two. three mm -hmm. so but you but there's not all three of them it's the top one the first one no. is the first choice right right it goes to the first one and then if the if this, that first one is unable or is not around then it will go to choice number two and then um and then if choice number two is not able to make it um, then I'll go to choice three. Rex, did you have a question? Yes, I do. And it's a rather awkward one. So I, um, it has to do with my wife. Um, I don't want her making the decisions for me. Um, She's experiencing dementia and it comes and it goes and uh, there's good days, there's bad days. And I prefer that she not be the one to make that decision. And I've been told that they will automatically go to the spouse first. Um, I, <clears throat> so I, I'm not clear about these agents, but I, you know, I right. like that things set up so that someone besides her is making the decisions on my behalf. Absolutely. Um, as I uh, explained a little bit earlier on, let's see what page that is. That's page one. Yeah, and I came in late and I apologize. Oh, you're good. No, no problem. Happy to, to tell you. So on, it's page four on here and it says the person I choose to be my healthcare agent is, and then you put them down. Uh, I was explaining that I know people who don't put their spouse down for whether it's that reason or, for, or that they feel that their spouse may not be able to make a sound judgment in that choice. You can choose, say you have a child or a friend that you choose to be your healthcare power of attorney or agent, uh, you can put that down. And this is a binding document once it has been signed by you and two witnesses or a notary. So, um, so say you choose a child and... Um, a daughter or son and, and he or she can make those decisions for you so your wife can. So this would that would alleviate that um, that for you. All right, uh, then a follow-up question if I'm allowed. Uh, mm -hmm. I have on file with my doctor, it's not a five wishes one, but it's one to do with, you know, uh, like if I fall over unconscious, you know, what do I want to have done? Mm -hmm. sort of thing. It does not include, but would the five wishes work in conjunction with what my doctor has on file? That's a good question. I guess it just depends on what is on that document and the newest documents. So, okay, say five wishes, 
um, has something that's covering that something that's on that document as well. The newest, um, the the newest newest sign. It's not the most recently signed document will trump the old document on that part. So say you have a decision in five wishes and it's different than the one and the other one, then the five wishes one will uh, supersede it. Yes. But you. but Rex, are you talking about the pulse form that lime green? Form? Were you talking about a DNR or are you talking about something else? You're talking about a living will, right? A living, living will. will. Yeah, it, yeah, I have a living will. Okay. And, and that, that my, I have a form that my doctor has given to me, like, you know, do you want to be uh, resuscitated or, you know, for how long? And then, you know, it's kind of like um, what mine says is that uh, uh, keep me on life support just long enough to determine whether I have a chance of coming out of it or not. And if I don't, then go ahead and end things. But um, so I don't know if I, the five wishes sounds like it's more, um, it covers more than what the doctor has on file. Although, Rex, it says it tells you on, on page three, and, and Nick is willing to send these out to anyone who wants them. So we can, Christy can take people's names yeah. and we can get them sent out. But on the bottom of page three, it says, how do I change to five wishes if I already have a living will and durable power of attorney? So that might help, help address that question, I think. Okay. Is that right, Nick? That, that's correct, yes. I mean, uh, I, for instance, I have a I have a living will also, but I haven't revised it for many years. So I'm going to look at my living will and look at what's on here and decide whether I need to change it. And if I do, I can fill this out. I can sign it and get two witnesses, and then it will trump my other living will, and I'll put it on my medical record. Mm -hmm. But if I want to keep that, then I can. Great. I. Rex, I don't know when you came in or if you heard Nick talk about the pulsed form, the lime green form that you keep in your home. Right. Okay. Yeah, I did. I, I came in. It was not quite 430 when I came in. And he was just, just beginning on the second of the five wishes. So, yes. And I'm not sure I really want that posted on my refrigerator, but I'll have to find some place to put it. Well, apparently you can your freezer too. You put it in a Ziploc bag in your freezer. They look there. Oh. Do they look there? Oh, yeah, really? they look there. Yeah. You could even put a little note on your refrigerator that says "Post in freezer." <laughs> okay. They, they expect the the they the emergency responders look on your refrigerator and in your freezer. Is that right, Nick? That's what I've been. Told. I believe so. Yeah. Anyway, so that's. But they're this, not going to go through your whole house looking for it. So that's yeah, the, that's the kind the of the spot. places that they, they will look. Susie? Yeah. yeah um, it sounds like you do not need an attorney. This is legally binding without an attorney as long as you yes. haven't notarized. Is that correct? That is correct in the state of Washington. Yes. Okay. But so they say that you should give it to your attorney if you have an, something else on record so that they know that you've updated it. Please. Yeah. No, please. I, well, ahead, 20, over 20 years ago, and I don't even remember who the attorney was. <laughs> well, and please understand, this is only for health care. This does not have nothing to do with your financials or uh, wills, as in what you're going to give to somebody. This is only for health care. It's for okay. verbal power of attorney and living will, right? The, the, the two. Yeah. Right. Because it gives an agent and it gives your wishes. Right. And you can have it notarized, Mike. Yes. Yeah. Lois, you, if you- yeah, I just wanted to make a comment that I had just recently filled out the green form. And um, we were very specific because I'm very healthy right now. And so we were very specific about, I, I want the DNR if I'm at the point of by being in an irreversible coma. And so, I'm not posting that on my refrigerator because like if I have a heart attack now, I probably would want them to do, to try. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, exactly what And I have a I have my daughter as as having my my power of attorney, so um, I'm confident that if I got to that point, then she would make the right decision. 
that, that's exactly how I'm feeling about it is that when somebody, if somebody has to come to the house like an ambulance, I want them to do what they can at the house. It's not until after I get to the hospital and a determination is made as to what, um, what the outcome will be that that would come into effect, the five wishes. It's not and that's be in your medical record, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. point, Lois, good point. Did anyone have questions about compass care, hospice, palliative care, why we've got Nick here, home health? I'll be just say, um, if you would like one sent to you, uh, let Chrissy know. Uh, I'm happy to mail it. It will come under bereavement services. That's mine from Cottage in the Meadow. So don't be panicked. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be out. I'll be here tomorrow, but I'm going to be out for the next two weeks. My dad's having surgery. I'm headed to Texas on Saturday. So I'll be out the next two weeks. I'm going to go help him. Um, but uh, I will be back. So uh, I will get to it as quickly as I possibly can when I get back. So Nick, can you say something about, uh, do, you, do you do support groups for yes. people? And yes. who qualifies to go to those? Uh, it, any, anybody in the community is uh, welcome to come. You do not have to have a loved one die on hospice uh, or under our program. So anyone, if you've lost a loved one, uh, you can be per, uh, participate in any of our support groups or the Cooking for One or uh, anything that we offer through bereavement services. The Memorial Foundation is, is gracious and kind and has uh, really supported our the bereavement program. And um, so if you past go year's online, been a hard one, so go ahead, I'm sorry. If you go online, can you see when they meet and all, how do you find out information about the groups? Um, the best way is uh, to call or email me, but because it continues to change, but you can try Yakima Compass Care okay. org, and okay. they can, should be able to find it. Okay. Great. Um, yes, here is yakimacompasscare.org. So if you do go services, find it, yeah. this is what it looks like. Okay. And I, I guess I won't you know, go through all of our, or there, <laughs> I'm not there anymore. But I'm at the bottom. Down at the bottom. Bereavement yeah. services, Nick. Yeah. The under there. There, okay, that's how we yeah. get in touch yeah. with Nick. And then here's right. some of the calendar. Yep. And living with loss is anything with, I mean, going through what we've been through this past year, you know, mm -hmm. in grief recovery workshops. And here's yeah. the for one. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, Great. celebration day. Um, Thanks, Chrissy. Good. So what's, so, the, can, what's the website for that? Yakima Compass Care dot org. Yeah, compass care dot org. Okay, thank you. I can put it in the email. Yeah, put it in the email when you send it out, Chrissy. Yeah. Would you okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Now, Nick, there is I can pick up. Well, they they can be mailed out if anybody wants these packets. Packet. Yeah. Compass care, or we can pick up some. Sure as well so yep. i guess email you know our organization ysnn okay. give me an email and let me know if you want us or nick to you know send you one in the mail if anybody wants a packet five wishes packet any other questions yeah has the five wishes changed much in the last number of years because I did pick up one of those packets a number of years ago, and it's in one of my boxes that I'll be unpacking sometime in the near future. Is that still as uh, the same today as it well, was a number of years ago? Since I've known it for the past four or five years, it hasn't changed, yeah. but I don't know what it was beforehand, so I don't, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. But it's as long as I've known it for five years or four years, it's about, it's been the same. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Nick. That's You're most welcome. wonderful. Thank you for all that information. And um, let me just say a couple words about upcoming Zoom talks. Um, next week, 
we have something called Emergency Planning 101 for Yakima and Sela Neighbors Network. And Deborah Ann, who's on today, and Susie, who's on today, and Inga, who's on today, have helped plan this. And this is for you if you always thought you should get prepared for an emergency, but you never quite got around to it. We're going to try to add some humor to this. We're going to try to help you in the space of four sessions, get ready for an emergency. And so if you think you might be interested, come to the first session, which is next week at this time. And then if you decide you want to continue with us, we're going to send you a packet of information in the mail that will have all sorts of things that will help you plan and actually get ready for an emergency so that you, by the end of May, are going to be ready. And that's pretty amazing. The first session is going to be a, a description of what's to come. So join us next week if you want to do that. And then March 31st, we're going to have a more upbeat theme. Brooke Creswell is going to talk about the Yakima Symphony Orchestra and how it got started and started and started. Um, and then we have on April 7th, Mike Mullen is going to uh, talk about scams, recognizing and avoiding common scams. Ooh. So we have a lot coming up. Watch your uh, emails from Chrissy and she'll keep you informed. Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Nick. We really thank appreciate you, Nick. this. All right. Yeah. Thanks, yep. everybody. Have yep. a great day. I got another meeting to go to. Yep. All great. right. Thank All, you. Right. All right. Let Chrissy know if you need a form. All right. Take care. Happy cooking. <laughs>